Good morning, class. So for this year, our specialization is about housekeeping. And for this week, uh, this will be our topic for week one. This will be our topic, handle housekeeping request. Okay. Now, for the learners, for your class, ano ba dapat ang mismong mga kailangan nyo matutunan? This module is designed to acquire knowledge, skills, and attitude in performing the housekeeping tasks by providing a series of learning activities to achieve the following learning competencies. Number one, provide housekeeping services to guests. And number two, prepare rooms for guests. Now, let us read the instructions below to, in to accomplish the objectives intended for each lesson. Number one, read and understand the content for each lesson. Number two, follow the instructions carefully to perform the activities given. Number three, you may ask guidance from your teacher or guardian to further understand the lesson. Number four, assess yourself and apply the concepts and skills that you have learned. And num number five, perform all activities given following the instructions. And number six, have fun in learning. Now, what are our expectations or our goals as we finish our self-learning module? And the expectations natin. After going through this module, you are expected to number one, discuss the implementing hotel codes, rules, and regulations. Number two, explain different skills of good housekeeper needs, such as in uh, in uh, interpersonal skills and intrapersonal skills. Number three, list down and describe the basic functions of each person in the housekeeping department. Number four, discuss the nature, scope, and guest room of guest room cleaning care and maintenance number five enumerate bedroom and bathroom amenities offered in institution and number six list down procedures in conducting room check turn down and make beds and lastly demonstrate proper handling of guest requests in housekeeping following the safety and security standards now let us have our pretest it Pre-test is administered to you, class, in order for us teachers to know if you have some prior knowledge about our lesson or about our specialization for this school year about housekeeping. So, you may get your SLMs or self-learning modules in order for you to answer your pre-test. Or, also, you may also use another sheet of paper or separate sheet of paper in order for it to be your uh, answer sheet. Okay, so let us now start. For number one, the following are the examples of good bedroom amenities except A side table, B Wi-Fi, C D and D design, D and design, or letter D, none of the above. Number two, what do you call the management policy and agreement between the guest and the hotel? A hotel guide, B housekeeping, C hotel rules, and letter D codes. Number three, what do you call the services or items that are offered or placed in the guest room? Letter A, incentives, B, freebies, C, hotel perks, or letter D, amenities. Number four, what, skills, what skill is consisting of facial expression, body language, and gestures? A, verbal, C, uh, B, nonverbal, C, communication, D, questioning. Number five, what interpersonal skill is great way to initiate a conversation a manners b listening c questioning letter d self-management number six what is the correct procedure when entering guest room this is our procedure number one uh, one step one step open the door step two announce housekeeping step three knock the guest room price or uh, number four Wait for two minutes and step five, announce yourself and enter the room. So for this question, you will um, uh, sequence the procedure, the, uh, the uh, sequence the procedures uh, given and to, uh, to have a correct procedure in entering guest rooms. Letter A, 3, 2, 4, 1, 5. Letter B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Letter C, 3, 1, 4, 5, 2. Or letter D, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4. Okay. Number seven. What do you call the skills that are used by a person to interact per ad, to interact others? A. Interpersonal skills. Letter B. Intrapersonal. Letter C. Internal. And letter D. External. Number eight. 
who oversees on the overall administration and operation of housekeeping department. A. Deputy Housekeeper Letter B. House, assistant Housekeeper Letter C. Executive Housekeeper or Letter D. Guest Room Attendant The following are job descriptions of guest room attendant. Is that A. Report to floor supervisor Letter B. Cleaning and tidying of rooms Letter C. Make guest room beds or Letter D. Monitoring inventory Number 10 For the last number which of the following is not the nature and scope of guest room cleaning, care, and maintenance? A. Safekeeping of lost and found item. Letter B. Attending to other guest needs and concerns. Letter C. Provision for other services. Or letter D. Assign a day-to-day -day responsibility to supervisor and stops. Now, you're done with the our pre-test. For your pre-test, uh, kindly take a picture of it and send it to your teacher in order for us to check if uh, uh to check to check your paper and to check also if you have some prior knowledge about our specialization for this school year okay now let us do a looking back or for some recap or so for our for our motivation for this year now what comes first to your mind when you hear the word housekeeping I'll write it in the box below so on their slms you may write onto what uh what comes first into your mind or some words that can be used in order for us to define or when you whenever you hear the word housekeeping okay now based on the words that you have written what definition of housekeeping can you create so let us answer or complete the complete this the, the statement housekeeping is okay you may answer your or you may answer now the this portion or this definition by means of just merely writing it onto your SLMs or to your separate sheet of paper. Okay. Hello my dear students, welcome to our class in technology and livelihood education. The lesson that we will be discussing for the whole school year is all about housekeeping. I will be discussing the introduction of housekeeping, hotel codes, rules and regulation, and the basic skills needed of a good housekeeper. But before that, we need to define first what is housekeeping. So when we say housekeeping, it is a management of household tasks which includes cleaning and organizing and to maintain safety and orderliness. It, uh, it is also the regular and systematic cleaning and maintenance of all the facilities at home of the workplace to provide safe and pleasant environment. Housekeeping is to ensure that the guest is comfortable and safe during his or her stay at the hotel. Okay, class, when we say housekeeping, it's not only uh, cleaning, but we have to follow the different rules and regulations. So, pag sinabi ba nating housekeeping, isa na tayong katulong? Of course not. So, ito is pag, uh, pag, uh, uh, pagsasaayos natin sa ating, uh, sa ating bahay, or mostly, karamihan dito yung mga nag-work sa hotels. So, bakit ba kailan natin itong i-discuss? Para sa, para sa kaayusan din ng ating bahay, para sa malinis na, na bahay natin. Kasi, pag ito'y malinis, komportable tayong manirahan dito para tayong safe. Pero kung lahat dyan nakakalat, hindi siya organized, so parang wala tayong kasiguraduhan na safe tayo, tapos hihiga tayo na nakakalat lang lahat dyan. So, kailangan lahat ng gamit natin organized, malinis. So, dapat nating matutunan na habang tayo ay bata pa, huwag nating hayaan na mga magulang natin ang gagawa nito. Kasi, later on, magkakaroon din tayo ng pamilya or magkakaroon kayo ng pamilya. So, yun yung ituturo nyo sa mga anak ninyo, sa mga uh, ma matututunan nila kung paano. Pero kung kayo pa lang mismo, hindi nyo pa alam kung anong gagawin ninyo dyan, Paano naman paano niyo maituturo 'yon sa susunod niyong mga generation o yung mga anak ninyo? 
At saka girls, kung kayo hindi marunong mag ay sa bahay, syempre, uh, hindi ka hindi maiinlab yung mga boys sa inyo. Ganon din naman yung mga boys, kung mga bulagsak sila, pag nakita ng mga girls, mata-turn off naman sila kaagad, di ba? Okay, so, ready na ba kayo na makinay kung ano ang lesson natin tungkol dito sa housekeeping? Okay, sit back and relax. So, our next lesson is all about hotel rules. So, what do you mean when you say hotel rules? These are management policies and agreements between the guest and the hotel. These are agreements are stated on the guest registration card and signed upon check-in. So, ito, pagpasok mo sa hotel, meron na silang uh, card na binibigay and then doon sa card na yun, naka-indicate na yung mga house rules house rules or hotel rules nila na kailangan mong sundin. Tapo after that, they will let you sign on that rules. So, ibig sabihin, pag binasa, bago mo signan yun, kailangan mo muna siyang basahin, uh, intindihin, and of course, you have to follow that rules. Ano pa ba yung meron doon? Government policies are also included which have to be followed by the guest at all times. So, ang ibig sabihin niyan, kailangan natin sundin yan lagi-lagi once na nandun tayo sa hotel kasi kailangan tayong sumunod. Sabi nga doon, meron din siyang government policies. So, nandun din kung ano man yung government policies na yon na rule ng hotel, naka-indicate doon, kaya kailangan mong pumirma doon kasi pag meron kang ginawa or hindi sinunod, violate mo yung rule na yon ipapakita nila yung pinirmahan mong paper na ibig sabihin, bago ka mag-check-in, amenable ka doon sa mga rules nila na kailangan mong sundin at dapat kang sumunod. Hindi mo dapat sa pa sasawayin kung ano yung rules nilang yon So, yun yung sinasabi nating hotel rules and regulation. You have to follow it at all times. Our next lesson is all about hotel rules, regulations, and codes. So, are you familiar with the different rules in the hotels? Maybe, you are not yet familiar with it. So, that's why we have to discuss all these hotel rules and regulation. And of course, the codes. Ano ba yung sinasabi nating rule? So, para lang, yung, uh, uh, para lang yan yung sinusunod natin ngayong pandemia. So, bawal tayong lumabas. Lalong-lalo na ang mga kabataang tulad nyo. So, kami naman, uh, pag kami ay lumabas, we have to wear face mask, face shield, and social distancing. And if possible, if we can uh, bring our own alcohol para magamit natin to pag nasa, pa, para magamit namin pag nasa labas kami. So, kayo naman, ang sabi sa inyo, bawal kayong lumabas. Kaya nga, meron tayong uh, pag-aaral sa bahay lang. So, hindi kayo pwedeng puma pumasok, hindi pwedeng face-to-face -face learning. So, ang ginagawa natin ngayon ay nasa bahay lang kayo, pero nag-aaral kayo. Kasi nga, ang rule ng government is bawal kayong lumabas. Sabi nga ni Kim Chu, bawal lumabas. Kaya ano naman yung codes? So, sa hotel, meron sila mga different codes. Para lang yun sa ano eh, mag-boyfriend. Halimbawa, kayong dalawa ay merong code para hindi halata na yun pala ay sinasabi ninyo. Lalo na yung mga katulad nyo ngayon na sasabihin lang nung, sas, halimbawa sasabihin nung ano, boyfriend nyo. 143, which means, I love you. O kaya naman, sasabihin din ng, uh, 
may minsan sasabihin niyo din na since magkalayo kayo sa isa't isa ngayon, meron tayong physical wala tayong physical wala kayong physical touch. So ang nangyayari niyan, you miss each other. So ang sasabihin niyo, I am why I miss you. Yung tipong ganun. So those are examples of codes. So sa hotel, meron din tayong code na nakikita at ginagamit nila sa different areas. So, kung ano man yun, okay, we have to discuss. We will now proceed with the different hotel codes. Okay, we can see these hotel codes in hotel amenities, hotel property types, rate category, property location, and transportation. And these are the different codes. Number one is BLO, which means blocked. CO, checked out. CL, chain lock. DL, double lock. TNCO, did not check out. DND, do not disturb. DO, do out room. HL, heavy luggage. HU, house use. LL, light luggage. LO, lock out room. MUR, make up room. NCI, newly check in. Next, we have there the NL, which means no luggage. NS, no show. OC, occupied and clean. OCC, occupied. OD, occupied and dirty. OOO. Meaning, out of order. OR, occupied and ready. SO, slept out. V, vacant room. VC, vacant and clean. Hindi siya Victoria Court. VCI, vacant, clean and inspected. VD, vacant and dirty. And lastly, we have there the VR, which means vacant and Ready! Okay, so ito mga to ay na makikita natin sa different uh, areas ng hotel. So, once na nakita natin to, kailangan natin ma-identify or halimbawa meron doon, may nakita ko doon, nakalagay na uh, ano nga ba yung ano doon? Uh, do not disturb. Saan ba natin to nakikita lagi? Halimbawa, meron bagong bagong kasal. Di ba nakikita ninyo? Meron nakalagay doon. Do not disturb. Pero, minsan, ang nilalagay na lang nila is DND. Ibig sabihin pala nun, do not disturb. O kaya naman, uh, no show. Meaning, nag, 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 ano yung guest, nag signify na pupunta siya doon, but then, hindi siya pumunta. So, they will mark it as no show. Hindi na magpupunta yung guest na yon. Ibig sabihin, kinancel niya yung pag-check in niya supposed to be. Okay, so those are the simple codes that they use in hotels. We will now proceed with hotel rules and regulation. As I have said a while ago, when we say Regulations we have to follow while we are in the hotel premises. And why do we? Why do these hotels have regulations? This is to ensure that the guests have safe and comfortable stay. So one one regulation is upon check in. So upon check in, the guest must present ID, including his or her visitors, for the hotel records. The presented documents will be returned upon departure. So, this is very important. So, for example, nag, nag, yung guest, papasok kasama ng, ng, ng mga, may mga visitor siya. So, kailangan mag-check in doon. Bakit? Halimbawa, may emergency. May nangyari. So, that uh, the hotel will be easily identify sino ba yung mga nandoon sa loob na yon. Okay, next is... Departure. Ano naman yung departure? Uh, halimbawa, uh, aalis na. 
Pero, for example, hindi pa siya, hindi pa siya ready or gusto pa niya magstay sa hotel na yon. So, this guest must inform right away the hotel para magawa ng extension. Or, the, kasi kung hindi niya ma-inform yon, baka mamaya may next na guest, may mag-occupy doon, magkakaroon ng problema. Then, we have the guest belongings. Yung mga important valuables ng guest can be placed in the room provided it is locked. Sa mga hotels, meron tayo mga uh, maliit na lagayan na mga valuable things. Meron yung padlock. So, kailangan pagka mag-iiwan mag ang guest ng mga valuable items, pwede doon sa may lock na yan or they have to bring the valuable materials. Bakit? Para kasi any loss is doon sa room nila, hindi liable yung hotel. Kasama yan sa regulation na pipirmahan ng, ng, ng guest pag pumasok sa hotel. Hazardous items or deadly weapon. Ano ba yung mga hazardous items or deadly weapon? Any form of hazardous items or good is strictly prohibit, prohibited. Weapons such as guns, knives, and the likes are advised to surrender to the hotel management upon entry. So, bawal yun ipasok sa loob ng uh, rooms. Strictly prohibited. So, nakalagay yun sa rules nila. Then, we have the bills payment. So, ito na yung babayaran mo. Bills must be settled upon check-in. Additional charges must be paid upon check-out. So, sa mga hotels class, kailangan pag nag-check-in tayo, bayad na agad yon. Yung iba nga kumukuha pa. Minsan, may mga nagbibigay ng promos. So, babayaran mo muna yon. And then, kung meron ka mga additional charges, like for example, dun sa hotel, may ref sila dun. Meron kang, may, may meron kang ininom, nag nagustuhan mo, nakain. So, inform mo yung hotel bago ka mag-check out or yung bill na yon para isasama nila. Pero, yung mismong kab kabuuan ng babayaran mo sa hotel, bago ka mag-check in, bayad na yon Hindi pwedeng mag-stay ka muna, tapos pag mag-check out ka, saka ka magbabayad. Makaramihan kasi or mostly ng mga hotels ka nun. Babayaran mo muna bago ka mag-check in. Meron lang additional na babayaran pagka may, da may na-damage dun sa room o kaya meron kang mga consumables na nakain na or nagustuhan mo na inumin, ganun. Ayon, damage to property. Ay hindi sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina. The guests and their visitors are, or whoever they are with are held liable for whatever damage they had during their day stay. So, pagka may mga nasira, ayun nga, sabi as sinabi ko nga kanina, isasama yan sa bills ninyo, babayaran niyo 'yon. Kasi, bago kayo mag-check out, bago niyo surrender yung susi, merong, merong mga busboy o yung mga pupunta doon sa, doon sa uh, room ninyo, iti-check kung may mga damage, ano yung mga, mga nasira or nawala, inform nila doon sa hotel para bago kayo makapag-check out talaga, babayaran, pababayaran nila yun sa inyo. Rules and Regulation of the Government. So, yun na nga, meron din tayo mga rules and regulations sa government na sinusunod. Depende na lang sa hotel yun, ang nakaka-indicate doon sa pipirmahan ninyo. Pipirmahan ng guest, rather. So, yun yung mga hotel rules and regulation. Next is basic skills needed of a good housekeeper. What is skills? Housekeeping skills are skills that are necessary for housekeeper or 
hotel staff to be effective at their job. It includes interpersonal and intrapersonal skills. We have two categories of skills of a good housekeeper. The first is interpersonal skills and the second one is intrapersonal skills. What do we mean when we say interpersonal skills? So these are skills used by a person to interact with others. Good interpersonal skills are a prerequisite for various positions in an organization. So we have here different examples of interpersonal skills. The first one is the verbal communication. So, ito yung pakikipag-usap natin sa mga guests. So, it is the ability to communicate through words with the correct tone and manner. So, kailangan kalma lang tayo at saka syempre, you will have to use polite words. Next one is nonverbal communication. So, when we say nonverbal communication, it consists of facial expressions, body language, and hand gestures. So, yung minsan yung pagbibigay natin, like for example, yung pagbibigay natin ng mga hand gestures, may mga meaning din yun. So, pero kailangan uh, maging, maging maingat din tayo kasi minsan yung mga facial expression natin, like for example, pagtas-tas ng kilay ng ganyan, it is also a nonverbal communication for E eh kung yung guest mo supla dito or nakita ka may sinabi siya sa'yo tapos tinaasan mo ng kilay. So, it is not uh, appropriate na mag yung facial expressions mo. Then we have here the listening skills. Listening skills is the ability to hear attentively and process information correctly. Alam nyo yung klase mga guest minsan, ano yun eh, matataray sila. So, kailangan pag may sinabi sila, very attentive kang nakakinig. Tapos, if possible, ilag, ilag mo yon yung mga information na kailangan nila. Kung hindi, minsan, kaya sila sumisigaw or pinapahiya ka kasi hindi mo napapakinggang mabuti yung mga sinasabi nila. Kasi, minsan, ang tatarayan ka nila, lagi nilang sasabihin, customer is always right. Then, we have here the questioning. Questioning is a key to gather the information that helps us to solve problems, to aid our decision-making process, and to understand each other more clearly. So, for example, yun yung sinasabi ko kanita, yung listening skills, hindi mo naintindihan. You have to ask the guest para hindi ka, na, hindi ka magkaroon ng problema. At Kung masasagot niya ng tama, so magiging smooth yung uh, pagstay nila or yung relationship niyo with the guest. Next one is leadership. It involves effective decision making in any role. Employers value people who take ownership to reach common goals. So, ba't kailangan, tayo, kailangan ang leadership? For example, uh, nagkakaroon ng problema or nakita mo yung, yung isang kasama mo or na meron siyang problema. So, ikaw mismo, nakikita mo na yung solusyon eh. So, kailangan, kahit hindi ikaw yung leader, pwede kang mag-suggest, mag, 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 maging leader ka on that time para maiwasan yung uh, aberya na sabi nila or problem. And then, we have there the teamwork. A good workplace has workers who support each other and can re rely on their capacity and ability. So, teamwork is very important. Kahit sa ang bagay naman yan eh. Pag meron tayong ginagawa, kaya nagiging, uh, nagiging successful yung ating mga ginagawa. Kasi nga, two heads, as they say, two heads is better than one. So, ito yung teamwork na sinasabi. So, pag may problema ka o yung kasamahan mo, ganito, hindi niya kaya, nahihirapan siya, which is alam mo na kaya mo siyang gawin, kaya mo siyang tulungan. So, gawin mo yon May initiative kang gumawa nun. And then, problem solving. So, pag may problema, kung meron kang teamwork, marunong kang mag-question, marunong kang sumagot sa mga tanong, malulutas ka agad yung 
problem. And then lastly, dependability. Ano ba yung dependability? Dependable, people can be relied on in any given situation. So, pwede kanilang, maasahan kanila kahit saang bagay. So, may problema, halapitan ka, maasahan ka. So, that is dependability. So, these are the different interpersonal skills. Next is interpersonal skills. Meaning, these are skills about self-awareness and controlling your attitude. These are the foundations on which you build your relationship with others. They are often referred as soft skills. So this means, uh, these are your attitude, your own attitude. You do not depend the attitude of others. So mismong sarili mo, sarili mong attitude yan. Okay, so what are the different examples of intrapersonal skills? Number one is self-confidence. So, so, when we say self-confidence, it's a good housekeeper. You should not doubt yourself on how a person perform, on how you perform for the specific task assigned to you. So, alam natin yun na yung self-confidence Kailangan meron tayo nun, hindi yung nahihiya tayong gumawa ng ganito, ganong ganon Yung confident tayo sa ginagawa natin, sa anumang bagay. Uh, kailangan, iisipin natin na alam mo yun, kailangan mong magawin yun. Confident ka, pag confident ka, successful yung gagawin mo. Lalo, lalo na yung skill na yun, hindi yung uh, lalampalampa ka, kailangan... Uh, Confident ka sa lahat ng bagay naman na gagawin natin, di ba? Pag sinabing self-confidence. Kaya nga, pansarili natin yon. Tayo lang ang makakatulong sa sarili natin regarding dyan sa skills na yan. Then, we have their assertiveness. So, when we say assertiveness, it means standing up for what you believe in defending your ideas with confidence, instructing others on what you need to be done. So, kailangan uh, naniniwala ka na matatapos mo yun. Hindi yung matatapos mo yun dahil sa tulong ng iba. Sa mismong sarili mo, na, naniniwala ka na kayang-kaya mo yun. Then, last one is self-motivation. Ano ba yung self-motivation? It's a good housekeeper knows his responsibilities takes action immediately and finishes task willingly. Yung tipong minsan ayaw mong gawin pero kailangan kasi trabaho mo yon. So, kailangan mong i-motivate yung sarili, sarili mo. Kailangan kong matapos to. Ano ang dapat kong gawin? Responsib responsible ako na matapos ito. So, yun, yun yung dapat mong isipin. So, that is self motivation. So, these are the different intrapersonal skills in housekeeping.